for watch educational this video purposes and I'll be right only. back. This will not be an easy watch for anyone. This is the spot of the lynching of Mary Turner. In southern Georgia during the early spring of 1918, a white plantation owner by the name of Hampton Smith was found murdered at the age of 25. Immediately drawing an angry crowd, the plantation workers of Hampton's property, also known as Old Joyce Place, were targeted at once. Within the list of 13 suspects was a man named Hayes Turner. Born in 1892, Hazel Hayes Turner was a 19-year-old farm laborer who was married to a young woman named Mary Hattie Graham. Taking her married name of Turner, Mary was eight months pregnant at the time of Hampton Smith's killing, and the couple knew all too well about the dangers they now faced for simply being black. Within just three days of Smith's untimely death, Hayes Turner was one of many who were captured by police and arrested as a suspect. Little did Turner know, but a plantation worker named Sidney Johnson was already being looked at as the main suspect, not Turner. Despite the whimsy of Georgia's judicial system following Smith's murder, Hayes Turner was nonetheless questioned and kept in the county jail for further investigation. That was until the sheriff decided Turner might be more safe from the town's angry mob if he was taken to a neighboring city and held in custody there. County Sheriff Wade, who was accompanied by a court clerk, removed Hayes from a cell and headed towards the town of Quitman. Hayes never made it. At some point, Sheriff Wade stopped the vehicle en route as a mob of 40 white men blocked the road. They snatched the prisoner out of the vehicle, and the handcuffed Turner was led into the woods where he was hung by the neck in a tree. His body stayed there from Saturday to the following Monday, when he was finally cut down and his corpse was buried no more than 50 feet from the tree where he was murdered. Already distraught over the arrest of her husband while she was inching ever closer to her delivery date, Hayes Turner's wife Mary was traumatized the following day when she learned that her husband had been lynched. Without a doubt, Mary knew that the persons responsible hid their acts behind the shine of a sheriff's badge, and in her despair she publicly announced her pleas for justice to be served. She demanded that those responsible for her 19-year-old husband's brutal murder be charged with their crime, and that they proceed to seek justice in the local county courtroom. When the mob heard of Mary's demands, they sprung into action to hunt the pregnant woman down. Mary simply had no time to escape the clutch of their racist grasp around the neck of the situation. When the mob caught up with Mary, just one single day after the lynching of her own husband, the crowd showed no mercy as they put their deranged plan into action. First, the crowd of white monsters took her to Folsom Bridge. A tree hung just over the water on the banks, and that was where they decided to throw their rope. They tied the pregnant widow's feet together tightly and began to hoist her off the ground feet first. As Mary Turner dangled from the tree upside down, she began to scream in pain and cried for mercy over the life of her unborn child. The mob would have none of it. They then began throwing buckets of liquid on Mary, which were filled with motor oil and petroleum from the vehicles. With a gas-soaked face and her clothing that was dripping with the flammable combination, a match was lit. As Mary's hair caught fire, she screamed in agony. Her cries fell on deaf ears as a member of the mob approached her writhing in pain. He pulled out a knife, yanked her layered house dress off to expose her abdomen, and with a brutality that is incomprehensible, the man sliced Mary's stomach open with jagged sawing motions, and he removed her infant baby by letting it drop to the ground where it made two small cries. As Mary bled to death hanging upside down from the tree, her first interaction with her baby was watching that same man stomp repeatedly on her infant's head with the heel of his boot, killing it instantly. Within minutes, Mary Turner and her baby were both dead. The mob then cut her down, put the rope around her neck, and hung her lifeless corpse from the same branch of the tree that extended just over the water in front of the bridge. The crowd riddled what was left of the woman with bullets for hours, inflicting hundreds of bullet holes into her body. There, she remained for some time. The only thing marking her grave when she was finally cut down was an empty whiskey bottle with a congratulatory cigar stuffed into the neck. I've been debating for a few days if I was going to post this video because this story triggers the fuck out of me. But I had to move past that to share her story. These are the stories that they want to bury. They want us to forget. I cannot even imagine the terror and I cannot comprehend the brutality and savagery 
especially to children. It was not just one or two or three white people. It was hundreds of thousands that exhibited this type of brutality. And those people that had to die at the hands of these people, their stories will be shared. Even if it triggers me. In 2018, they had put up this memorial for Mary Turner. And of course, some racist people went over there and shot it up with bullets. But y'all want us to forget though, right? Y'all want us to think that slavery was so long ago and the mistreatment of black people were hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Yet there is a memorial and motherfuckers went over there and shot it. Just to remind us that they're still here. And that they don't mind using the same brutality. So please, mess us with the bullshit. Racism is alive and well. And white people, it's your job to eradicate it. Oh my god, this video was hard. <sighs>